So we're going to take this uh, complex number and we're going to subtract off this complex number and um, we notice that this is subtraction. So what does subtraction do? Subtraction goes in and distributes and changes all the signs. So this is going to become negative 5 this is going to become negative 2i and that's because of this negative. Now what happens here, well there's nothing in front so you could technically drop the parentheses and now all the parentheses are gone. So now that all the parentheses are gone you put the real part first. So what is negative 3 minus 5? Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And then you do the imaginary part and you really just treat imaginary just like you would an x except i times i is i squared which makes negative 1. And We'll talk about that in another problem. But here we have 4i minus 2i would be plus 2i. And that's it. Okay, all you have to do is make sure the real part's first, the imaginary part the second. So now we can also go to our graphing calculator and type it in and just confirm our answer. Notice it's negative 8 plus 2i, which is exactly what we just got. Okay, so your graphing calculator is smart enough to work with I. Now the I is down here at the period. You just have to hit the second button and then the period and that's how you get your I. So on number five, uh, this means take the complex number 3 minus 4I squared. When you square something it means multiply it by itself twice. Or just multiply it by itself I should say. So this is really just saying take 3 minus 4i times 3 minus 4i. And if it said to the third power, like if this was a 3, you would write it down 3 times. From there we're going to use our distributive property that says you take the first number and you distribute it to each term. So 3 times 3 is 9. And then you're going to take 3 and distribute it to negative 4i. Um, just take the real part times the real part and put an i next to it. So it would be 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 with an i. You then move to your second term negative 4i and you distribute that to both terms. Negative 4i times 3 is negative 12i and then negative 4i times negative 4i let's see, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 and then i times i is i squared. And then what you need to know for this problem is that i squared is always equal to negative 1 by, by definition. So anytime you have i squared, you can replace it with negative 1. Okay? So I'm going to go down here. I have 9 minus 12i. Um, minus 12i. But now I know that this is 16 times negative 1. And 16 times negative 1 is just negative 16. And I'm showing every single step when you're doing this for practice. You don't have to show every little step. 
from there you put the real part first so I go 9 minus 16 what is that the 9 minus 16 is uh, yeah negative 7 and then we have negative 12i and negative 12i that make negative 24i and then just make sure you have the real part first and then imaginary and then it should be fine so we took a second and we typed it into the graphing calculator and we got negative 7 minus 24i which is the same thing we just got here. So now I have 3 plus 7i divided by 5 minus 3i. Um, you never want i's in the denominator. So we are going to get the i out of the denominator. And the way you do that is if it's 5 3i with a minus, you're going to multiply by 5 3i with a plus. So that's called the complex conjugate. So, in other words, I am going to multiply by 5 plus 3i. Minus goes to plus. If this was a plus, you would multiply by the minus. Now, you can't just multiply by 5 plus 3i. That would change it. Unless you do it to denominator and numerator. That's a plus sign. And so now what I have, I need to take 3 plus 7i times 5 plus 3i and then I need to divide that by 5 minus 3i times 5 plus 3i. So I need to multiply twice. So from there, I'd go 3 times 5, 15. Three times three i is nine i. So I distributed the three to the five, the three to the three i. Now I'm going to move to the second term, seven i, and take seven i times five. That's thirty five i. And then seven i times three i, so seven times three, twenty one i times i is i squared. Now we're going to multiply denominators. So I'm going to go 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3i is 15i. So I just distributed the, the 5 to the 5, the 5 to the 3i. Now I'm going to move to the second term, negative 3i. Multiply it by 5. That would be negative 15i. And then negative 3i times positive 3i. That would be negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And i times i, i squared. Now I want you to notice that these cancel. They will always cancel. The reason why they will always cancel is because you multiplied by what's called a conjugate. If you multiply by the opposite sign with the same things, the middle term will always cancel. So now let's see what we get. On top, let's see, I don't want to write this whole thing over, but 21, that's negative 1, right? So this is the same thing as minus 21, because that's 21, i squared is negative 1, so it'll be negative 21. So 
So what is 15 minus 21? Negative 6. And then what's 9i plus 35i? 44i. So I have simplified the numerator. Now the denominator, again, i squared is negative 1. So negative 9 times negative 1, this would be a plus 9. So this is really saying what's 25 plus 9? That's what, 30, uh, 34? And then from there, some people leave the answer like this, but you really want the real part separate from the imaginary part. And so when I look at this, I notice to reduce this that they're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide them all by 2. If they were all divisible by 2 again, I would keep dividing by 2 or keep dividing by 3. Um, 3 is the smallest number. 3 does not go into 21. 3 does not go into 17. And then we're going to separate this into the real part. So it will be negative 3 over 17 plus the imaginary part, 22 over 17. So I just found that when you divide these, you get negative 3 seventeenths plus 22 seventeenths i. So we wanted to double check our work. So we typed it in. Notice I used parentheses to separate the numerator from the denominator. We got this decimal. So then I hit math, enter, enter, which changes this answer to a fraction. And I notice negative 3 seventeenths plus 22 seventeenths i is the same thing we got here. Okay, so this one's a little different. And the reason why it's different is because we don't have um, an i down here. We actually don't have an i anywhere. But we really do. And the i is right here. Because the square root of a negative, by definition, is i. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of negative 8 and just write it over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is negative 8 is the same thing as negative 1 times 8. But by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. And square root of 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I just found because the square root of 4 is 2, this 2 stays inside. So I just found that negative, I'm sorry, square root of negative 8 is the same thing as 2i squared of 2. So just to show my work, I just found that this, and I wrote it over here, and I found that that's the same thing right here, so I put that here. from here to here, from there to there, and I'll put it there. Maybe too many arrows, I don't know. That's all divided by negative 2. And then to reduce this, if you take 6 divided by negative 2, you get negative 3. And if you take negative 2 divided by negative 2, you get 1. So I just found that in simplified form, this is negative 3 plus 1i squared of 2. You don't technically need the 1. If I type this into my calculator, 
and I hit enter and it says hey your answer is not real we can't do that and so in real mode all calculations must result in a real number so let's see if there's a way to change this from real mode to imaginary and the way you change this to imaginary first we'll hit quit and if you go over here to mode somewhere in here there it is all the way down here you can change your calculator from real to imaginary you hit enter and now your calculator has is in imaginary mode get out of the screen and now let's try it okay, hopefully that changes that to a fraction for me Okay, unfortunately, it cannot change it to a fraction, but the square root of 2 is 1.41. So we did get the same answer. Notice they have the i. So we got negative 3 plus square root of 2i. The square root of 2 is 1.41. Just the calculator doesn't know that.